What's up guys, it's Trevor Hagen. Welcome to Beyond Transmission, a channel for exploring spirituality, including world philosophies, religions, and theories. Today we are in one of my favorite parts of the world, and that is Maui. We're driving up to Hana today, and I thought I would pull off and talk a little bit about something that I've really been looking forward to covering on my channel for quite some time now, and that is my whole experience with losing religion. I know I'm not alone when I say that this is one of the most difficult things that a person can go through. If you've gone through this, or maybe you're currently going through it right now and having what a lot of people would call a faith crisis, then this video is for you. I'm gonna be talking about my experience, what led to it, what I've learned nearly two years later, and maybe what I would have done differently in hindsight to, um, to hopefully help a few of you guys along the way. So first off, Maybe it's best for me to give you kind of a little bit of a, a background of where I come from, how I was uh, brought up. I was born in Utah. I was brought up in the LDS church, which is the predominant religion of the area, or as many people know it, the Mormon church. And it just seemed like the norm, you know? It was, it was the truth, and the whole world would one day come around to the same realization. Now, I really did have an amazing upbringing from my parents, and I really want to make sure that there's a distinction here between my family and religion. Nothing of this is about my family. I really do owe them the world for bringing me up the way that they did, um, even in the church, and I wouldn't change it for anything in the world. So family aside, my relationship to religion could probably be compared now to, um, say, an amazing relationship that goes on for several years but then for whatever reason, you kind of both decide to go your separate ways. You may even say that you'll always love that person, but you're just not meant to be together anymore. Anyway, I digress. Back to the story. Um, when I was 19 years old, I did serve uh, a mission for two years uh, in Bolivia, and I served in teaching and leadership positions throughout my 20s and early 30s. I really did learn a lot during that time, and, uh, and some of my biggest teaching moments were from uh, my mission and uh, within the church. But oftentimes, when we are brought up religious, we tend to cling to the third dimensional um, or literal aspect of spiritual teachings instead of really understanding the true meaning or the symbolism that's really hidden behind it all. And the truth is, many people that are even teaching within institutionalized religion, have no real education on this stuff themselves, including me. So what happens is we tend to kind of go around in circles with everyone, uh, trusting the other person, and, and it kind of becomes the, line, the blind leading the blind to, to some extent. Um, kind of like how the Bible was first written in very heavy symbolism, but all of that was lost when it, when it was then translated um, literally from people that didn't understand its true hidden meaning. So I guess you could say in other words, we seem to have forgotten what we've even forgotten. So when we find out that things didn't literally go down the way that we always were taught they did, like Joan and the Well or Noah and the Ark or what have you, we tend to have what I would call the Santa syndrome, you know, it's this whole idea, you know, that if Santa isn't real, then the Easter Bunny isn't real. And, and I always knew those leprechauns, you know, were just a hoax, stuff like that. So that's kind of what happened to me. I was, I was a very religious person, but in all honesty, I was not very spiritual. I mean, I said my prayers, I would bless the food. When someone was sick, you know, I, I would fast and pray and um, and when I was, uh, I felt like I was going about to die, I would have really intense prayers. But uh, everything that I believed was really surrounded by literal events that I assumed had happened. Instead of really searching for the deeper meaning behind these cloaked stories, I also carried one of the most spiritually damning attributes that anyone could carry. And that is the arrogance really that I was right and you know everyone else was wrong. I knew that uh, my religion was it so I had no need to look anywhere else for, for truth or spiritual understanding. By doing this unbeknownst to me 
I was literally setting myself up for failure. Failure to grow spiritually, failure to progress personally, and failure to accept others and truly allow love and unity into my life. So you might be asking yourself, well, how did you live like this for 35 years of your life? You know, what took so long to kind of get to this point? Well, you see, you can't always see all of this from the inside looking out of any ideology. Um, once you're on the outside looking in, of course, I would feel what you would call in, re in a religious context, the spirit. Um, a lot of times when I was, you know, in meetings of the church or I was, you know, reading the scriptures and, uh, but I, but I thought that I could only feel that within my specific religion. I thought it was special to that. And it was God telling me that the religion that I was practicing was true. Anyway, long story short, for me, um, it was it was it was the curiosity killed the cat really uh, when I when I was 35 um, I I came across some information that completely obliterated all that I thought I knew was true in the literal sense of my church I searched and I searched after that uh, this went on for several months almost a year um, for answers you know and proof that what I was reading wasn't true because I could not bear going on without having this, uh, this rock of belief beneath me. But as many of you could probably relate, the more I searched, the more holes that I kind of found in everything. You really do find what it is you're looking for. And, uh, and doubt began to just take me over. And I remember one day looking in the mirror and saying to myself, I believe nothing. I really was at zero. I was starting over um, in, in the sense that I had no beliefs. It was rock bottom for me and I, I fell into a um, kind of a place of despair. But looking back at it now, it was really the best thing that could have ever happened to me. And what I, what I mean by that is that it forced me to um, open my mind. It forced me in a very unrelentless way, actually, to let go of my ego and everything that I had ever assumed. It allowed me for the first time in my life to open up all possibilities and really start asking questions again with zero assumptions. You know, like, does God exist? Who am I? What are we doing here? What can history teach us? And what can I learn from others throughout the world and throughout time for that matter? You see, when you go through something like this, it's easy to feel shame, embarrassment, or you know, even despair um, and some resentment. I was pissed off, you know, and you start seeing several dominoes fall and you assume they're all going down. I know, we all go through it. It's just best to not fight these emotions, but to actually dive into them. It's kind of like mourning the loss of anything that was once dear to you. In fact, I would say the more that you embrace this change and accept it, the quicker you will see the positive outcome of it all. As Eckhart Tolle once said, some changes seem negative at first glance, but they create the space for something new to arrive. When I was going through this, I felt like I owed it to everyone around me that I loved to know exactly what I knew. And so I went very public with the whole thing. I tried to be strategic, but I really was hurt. And I felt like there was a secret that was being held, you know, from everyone. And I even did a big interview and, and attempted to reveal, you know, the sham uh, from the inside out. I should probably mention, I did have a lot of people thank me for doing what I did and telling me that it really did help them, you know, and so forth. But today I feel like the story was really only half told. And so in that way, it was kind of a disservice. And I say that because what I was sharing was so surface level. And so now looking back, I see that the focus was primarily on what's wrong with everything instead of what we can learn from it and what we have in common and where, where to kind of go from here. So anyway, here's the second half. 
Don't give up one belief and fall into another. Because whether you believe there is a God or you believe there is no God, for example, these are both beliefs at the end of the day. Instead, when you wake up and admit to yourself that you do not know anything, you open yourself up to a life of infinite knowledge, possibility, and beauty. A large part of what has brought a completely new dimension to my life is the power of meditation. It's as simple as that. Now, you may have experienced meditation in the past, but don't just sit in silence for a few minutes and say that you gave it a try, because I know that that was the case for me. Really look into it. Really look into yourself. The only truth that we really have is what we have right here, what we can perceive and what we can experience personally and individually. So wouldn't it naturally be best to dive into that? All of the answers that you are looking for are actually right here, waiting. They're always there. So whether you're going through a faith crisis or maybe you're just you know, looking to be more spiritual, the key really is to turn your focus from without to within. Try it. Meditate daily. Try it for 30 days. Consistently though. Morning and night. Just 20 minutes. Um, I'll also be doing a video on meditation and the different types of meditation and, and things that you can do. But just sitting quietly for 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes before you go to bed, protecting your mind first thing when you wake up and right before you go to sleep is so powerful. Watch how your perception will change. Watch how things all around you change. Your knowledge, your focus, your creativity, uh, the joy you experience, um, everything. Another thing that has really helped me is, is looking into other world religions. Uh, I've studied their books and, and tried to peel back the mythology and find out the common thread that really exists within them all. Now, although I've decided uh, personally that I really don't want to be limited to just one religion, you might find that there's a lot that you can do by staying within your religion and teaching others what you're learning. Everyone really is on their own path and we're here to help others in the most effective way possible. I know people personally that don't believe 95% of the literal aspect of their religion, but they decide to stay in in order to bring others to that common thread of light. I mean, is religion really doing more bad than good for people is the question. Well, I guess that would be a little bit beside the point because it's really where a lot of the people still are today. As I become more open-minded and accepting to all truth, I'm able now to sit peacefully through any religious service and really look for the common threads of truth, the bits of insight, live in that, and even count myself as part of them as long as they're willing to accept me for who I am. Uh, one week you might find me in a Buddhist temple, another uh, at a Book of Mormon seminar, or you know, another at a, a, an EDM party. It, it, it doesn't matter. It's, it's learning. It's connecting. And it might take you know, giving up some pride in order to do this, in order to grow um, after being hurt. But it's really all up to you, whether you want to expand or restrict yourself. Kind of like the example that I gave at the beginning, it's a lot like a relationship with another person where many people, they make themselves so, so vulnerable in the beginning in a relationship that uh, when they are deceived or hurt by that other person, it takes some time to trust and even love again. So feel free to take the time you need. But as a message for all of us that are transitioning away from religion, let's not fall into the same traps that made us leave in the first place and quickly cling on to other beliefs that go against things, you know, and completely flip a 180. Let's stay open-minded, open-hearted, and accept what is, because every person is just living their life on their time, and all we can do is love. Anyway, with that said, you guys, I hope this has been of some comfort or direction for you, no matter where you're at this path of life. If you like this video, please subscribe and, and uh, feel free to share it or leave a comment below. Most importantly, stay curious.
and we'll see you next time.